Um, so my name is Max Atkins. I work for the uh, Connect for Climate program of the World Bank Group. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here today with Ms. Oyun, who is the Member of Parliament on, on Mongolia? In Mongolia. And she's also the uh, President of the United Nations Environment Assembly. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, it's a great pleasure. Um, so, we're here today at, at Climate Action 2016. Um, a lot of the discussion is around implementing climate action. Um, we've seen that, you know, the climate threats are a lot more visible. Uh, 2015 was the warmest year. We've seen the highest acceleration of temperature in, in February this year. So, do you think coming out of this conference, uh, we will be able to implement uh, climate action as ambitiously as, 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 as required? Well, I feel that there is no other choice than implementing. Yeah. So um, it's good to see all this action and a lot of, uh, not only enthusiasm, but a lot of real work starting, not only at the inter uh, international organizations level, but also at the countries, and I'm very pleased to say even in developing countries level. And we, uh, it's very important to have also financiers and um, investors to change their investment attitudes and that this paradigm shift is taking place in that sector as well. Um, and of course, um, the main hope is for the young generation where the consumers are coming from. So consumers' attitude is also changing as well. So um, I think there is a good, um, good cautious optimism but I agree with um, Vice President Al Gore, who yesterday said that we need time and scale. So we cannot lose time, but also it has to be scaled up. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you're a member of parliament in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. um, could you maybe just lay out what, what the threats are facing your, your country and, and kind of what your um, action plans are right. going ahead? Well, uh, actually, many uh, people know about Pacific Islands and the dangers they, and challenges they are facing with the climate change, but countries like Mongolia, you probably don't know, uh, since 1940s, so it's what, more than 70 years, when we started measuring the temperatures, yes. Mongolia warmed up three times more intensely than the global average. So the global, so uh, it's 2.14 degrees Celsius, so, uh, but the the thing is that because one-fourth of our population are still nomadic herders and they are very directly dependent on pastures and their pastures are very fragile. So for hundreds, thousands of years, the nomadic, semi-nomadic livestock herders, they would uh, use what I would call green civilization, right? So they would move from one pasture to the better pastures, meanwhile the pastures will <coughs> rest and then it will be very recycling but also very sort of very lean and green civilization sort of. But uh, what happened is that because of the climate change and because we warmed up, we started getting more desertification, more pasture degradation. Almost 40% of, our, of our, all our glaciers have melted. So that's uh, dangerous in the future, not, not having a source of water as well. And even permafrost, which is northern part of Mongolia, it started thawing. So that's the great soil as well. So what is happening is that uh, some of the natural disasters, and they're called zod. So you have, when you have dry climate, you have very dry summer. And, that, and because it's a very cold climate in winter, we get to minus 40, 50 degrees Celsius. So this dry summer is followed up by very cold winters. And, uh, not very, um, and then, of course, there, there was not enough grass in summer. So livestock perishes in winter. So uh, we, and that, used to naturally occur as well previously, but now they, they're, they're shorter, that they're occurring more frequently. And that's because of the climate change. And because it's a very small population, three million, yeah. and it's not much industrialized, we didn't contribute too much to the climate change. But we don't want just to complain and say, okay, well, uh, we're suffering. But we've um, already adopted what's called green development strategy. So we have a lot of big targets for renewable energy. Although we have a lot of brown coal. So it's the simplest way to produce energy is to burn coal. And renewable is still more expensive, but we are deliberately encouraging investment in renewable energy. And also uh, we're um, working on green building standards because of the heating in winter. You know, we have to think of uh, 
how to insulate the houses properly, and also studying our pastures and you know uh, how we can. And um, we've recently done the forest inventory, and we're starting to uh, promote you know um, try, um, not to cut the trees, etc. So yes, we are doing our own way forward. Yeah, and uh, we're hoping that um, this momentum you know that is building up in the world will also help Mongolia to jump leapfrog to better green investments rather than you know going the old brown coal way. Absolutely and so I, I would imagine resilience is a very big uh, strategy and, and, and requirement for your development. Um, so looking ahead um, what are the big milestones for, for this year? Mm -hmm. I, I know uh, UNEP is organizing the United Nations uh, yes. Environment Assembly. Yep. Um, and then also leading into COP22. Uh, how, how are you aiming to position uh, resilience and, and what do you hope to come out of uh, some of the right. bigger meetings right. on the agenda? Well, when you ask about resilience, I uh, very simply understand resilience as a combination of everything. So. You have mitigation. I think that's also resilience, right? Because you are reducing the vulnerability, right? Adaptation, you're adapting. But it's a combination of two, and it's even more than that. Somebody was uh, very simply uh, referring to resilience yesterday uh, uh, using the example of the old warfare. If you are vulnerable, then you put a lot of armor, right? You put armor here, then here, and then... And then, uh, and then you, you think you're less and less vulnerable, but then you, you cannot, can no longer carry all this burden if you put all this armor, right? So you have to be more innovative and you have to go just beyond just trying to be less vulnerable. So you have to be um, innovative and come up with how you, how you can be flexible and sort of spring up with new solutions and sort of natural re resilience, I would call. And, uh, so I think it's a combination of everything, adaptation, um, mitigation, and even more than that. And I liked during the panel saying that we can't just deal with the disasters, we need to deal with the risks and think sort of longer term. So uh, you mentioned the United Nations Environment Assembly. Um, in Nairobi, in May, uh, at the end of May this year, there will be second United Nations Environment Assembly. And that's a governing body of UNEP, that's where all the environment ministers of the world gather. And it's not only environment ministers, it's also a lot of private sector, non-government, major stakeholder organizations, science, we're going to organize science policy forum as well. And also um, there will be big biodiversity day, so, and scientists. So whoever is interested in environment gathers during this environment week. And uh, so, of course, climate change will be a very important topic. We will be uh, ministers and the other stakeholders. We will be discussing environmental angle of SDGs, climate change, but also the um, main topic of the series, healthy planet, healthy people. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very relevant because if you are talking sort of um, in a theoretical terms of the planet uh, health, many understand, many understand the issue, but many necessarily don't. But if, you, if it relates to your own health, so if there is air pollution and your life expectancy is less, and then, you, and then you say, okay, if planet is healthy, then I'm healthy as well. So I think that can um, sort of make people understand much better. Absolutely, yeah. the, the interlinkages between climate change and uh, all the social and environmental benefits. And, and our lives. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, unfortunately at the end of the day, what moves people much faster is uh, also uh, their, their own, but also their future generations' lives as well. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's a very strong message for young people out there. So um, we, we, we're running a youth campaign and, uh, under the hashtag Youth mm -hmm. for Climate. Um, and it's, it's really under the guidance that this generation is the one that's already feeling the impacts of climate change. And it's the last generation that will be able to solve the challenge. Um, so what, what is your message for young people out there? No, it's a very simple me message. We have to change ourselves. We have to use less. We have to um, cons consume less. I mean, that we are consuming too much and we're using too much. We, we should start from there. We, of course, we have to save the planet's resources. So it means saving electricity, saving water, saving um, 
all the resources. And then, of course, uh, it doesn't mean that you know we have to uh, dim diminish the basic things. I think there is enough resources in the world and space in the world to uh, accommodate all the more than seven billion and then coming nine billion. It's just we have to be smarter. And then the changing of the attitude yeah. of every person, but also every young person is very important. And I think there is a lot of hope during the, this climate action summit that everybody is saying, okay, the main hope is the current millennials generation. So because we believe that, you know, their attitude is different and that they, that they will be different consumers and they will be completely uh, differently viewing, you know, the way they will be leading the business and societies and governments. Of course, of course we have to do our deal as well, our share of the deal, but uh, I think the main hope is on the youth as well. Yeah, right, and, and I'm sure us young people will be telling the older generation to, to shift their behavior. Um, no, thank you very much. And no, it's a really pleasure. I appreciate talking to you. Thank you. Good luck with a uh, very important initiative. And we'll see you later. At yes. Probably, at, I, we might actually come down to the UN General Assembly. Very uh, good. Otherwise, at COP22. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. So you.